Now if you want to go ahead and create some mailing labels, in other words I've got my customer info report here, I've got the customer name, the address, city, all I have to do is go ahead and generate a report, a label report, based upon the fields within this report, which by the way, when I scroll over, I've got the address, city, but I don't have the state. Well that's okay because this report is based upon the customer table, and when I double click and open up the customer table, it has that state field. So actually, when it comes to generating my labels based upon this report, even though it's not available here, the state field, it'll still pull in because it's based upon that table. So let me go ahead and close out. Make sure I have the report selected that I want to go ahead and generate my labels based upon the fields within that report, which is pulling its fields from this table based upon that table. Let's go ahead and click Create. Go to the Reports group. Click on Labels. The wizard opens up. It's going to ask us a bunch of questions. We give it answers. Based upon those answers, it's going to give us, well, hopefully a, a nice looking uh, page of labels here. First of all, I look at the manufacturer. Who manufactured them? Is it Avery? Click on the drop down arrow and choose one of the manufacturers because when you do, you can come up here and look on that box and see the product number and easily identify the label as opposed to looking at the dimensions going, let me see, this label is about one and one half by two and a half. In any case, you get the product number. You can easily select it without guessing the dimensions there, trying to figure it out with the tape measure. In this case, I've got uh, three across, and then I think it'll have ten labels down or more. In any case, click Next, and then it says, okay, how do you want your text to appear on this label? You can change the font type from Arial to Courier, the font weight, font size, color if you have a color printer, italics. Ooh, that looks fancy. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that. Click Next. What would you like on your mailing label? What fields? I want my customer name, so I'll go ahead and double click. Then I'll hit Enter to go to the next line, so I can enter in the address, double click, or add the address field to it. Hit Enter, and then double click the city. And then I'll come over here, type in comma, space, and then double click the state. Like I said, even though the state wasn't displayed in the customer info report, this report's still based upon the customer table, which has that field in the table, so it still pulls. That's fine. Then come over here, hit the space bar, as you can see it, and then double click on the zip. Click Next. And then it says, do you want your field sorted? In other words, when you generate your labels, would you like all the A's, customers that begin with the A's up at the top, the first labels, then down to the B's, C's, all the way down to the Z's? Go ahead and double click Customer Name. That's how I want my labels sorted. Click Next, and then, well, let's go ahead and give it a name for our report and call it RPT for Report Customer. Click at the end, Labels. Click Finish, and there you go. Now, what I recommend before you go ahead and stick the labels in your printer and print this off is that you print this off on a blank sheet of paper. Take that paper and hold it in front or behind your labels, and then hold those two that are overlaid, one on top of the other, in front of a light. And then when you look at that, notice that when the light comes through, make sure that the labels are around and aligned with the uh, text that you want to be printed, well, within the center of each label, because if not, and it's cutting it off, like, okay, we get the first label right, and then the next label comes here, and then the next label cuts that off. Well, a couple of things you can do. You can either right-click and go to the design view, and then try to close the gap, because all this grid space here is actually adding that much space between each label, at least mostly vertically, a little bit horizontally, so you can hover over down at the bottom, the page footer bar, till you can see your pointer pointing in opposite directions, then click and drag up to close the gap, and then you may want to click and drag to the right to bring in the grid just tight. In fact, you see the space just even before that. Let's go ahead and shift click all these fields here. In fact, if you hold down the control key and hit the A key, control A, selects all the fields, then you can go ahead and use your arrow keys to arrow them over to the left, and then go ahead and click and drag that over. Of course, I still have space above that. Well, you get the idea. Let me go ahead and right click, go to the print preview, and you see how they're tighter together now? Now the next issue that I'm looking at is that, look at the border and also look at the spacing in between the columns. I mean, if that doesn't look right, then we can come up here on the Print Preview tab, when we're in Print Preview, of course, and then go to the Page Layout, click on Page Setup. I can work with my margins and say, okay, the left margin's gotta be about one inch, and you can see when I type it over in the preview, it's gonna push everything over. And then on the Columns page, you can see the column spacing is 0.1. I can go ahead and go 0 0.001, see if that does anything. And then go ahead and click OK, and close the gap with the columns and it pushed everything over so you get the idea. Play with that and then when you're done and it looks good, then go ahead and stick in your sheet of labels and print off and you're good to go. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.